Hello, this is Paul from HackingWithSwift.com. I want to talk to you about just a few of the things changed in Swift 2 announced last week in San Francisco. Now, before you ask, I cannot talk to you about iOS 9. That is still under NDA from Apple, which restricts the publishing of screenshots. So I want to play it safe and stay away from that. Instead, I can talk to you about Swift 2 because that's been open sourced by Apple. Thank you, Apple. So I'll talk to you about Swift 2 in isolation. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. Okay, let's get into the easy stuff. Your old friend, Printlin. It's a Printlin Hello World. And it would appear in the Xcode debug console. Well, eh, red line. That's been removed in Swift 2. It's now just print. Same function, different name. Next up, a hugely transformative technology called protocol extensions are new in Swift 2. This will affect you initially through things like uh, global functions, particularly with arrays and uh, strings and similar. For example, if you had an array like this one, var names equals James, John, Sally, in Swift 1.2, to say if that thing contains James, you would write if contains names, James, like that, completely backwards. It's like Yoda programming speak. Uh, or you'd say uh, uh, var number of items equals count names. Again, backwards. With Swift 2, that's been redone. You can now say uh, if names.contains James, just like that. You can say names.count. You can say names.index of rather than the find function and so forth. It is so much more discoverable and more readable because you just press the dot key and find things in there much, much easier. Uh, at the same time, Apple has changed the way we measure strings yet again. If we had a string say, let stir equals hello world, and then let length equals, in Swift 1.0, we would have said count elements stir. In Swift 1.2, this became count stir. And now in 2.0, it's been changed again, hopefully for the last time. You now say stir.characters.count. Otherwise, the same number comes back. Next up, Swift now has much more intelligent compiler warnings. So if I had made these two things, say var stir and var length, and press build, it will say to me, hey, this variable was never changed. You should make that a constant. So it will warn you if things should be constants when they aren't, which is a great way to help coders. Next up, the do while loop has been renamed. So I'll give you an example, var counter equals 10, then do, and I'll print in here using the new print, of course, not print lin. I'll say counter green bottles hanging on the wall, Oops, on the wall, like that, and then subtract one from counter, and then the while, I'd say while counter is greater than zero. It's warning you straight away, do while is gone. You should change to repeat while. Literally just change the word do to be the word repeat. Otherwise, it's exactly the same code. Uh, that has changed because do has a new meaning now in Swift, which will come to shortly. Otherwise, it's exactly the same loop. Next up, my personal favorite new feature inside Swift 2 is hash available. So for example, if I was writing this app here for iOS 7, 8, and 9, which I am right now, and I want to make a new UI alert controller, I would say something like, you know, um, uh, let AC equals UI alert controller do stuff, and then self dot uh, window dot root view controller dot present view controller. Uh, what do I call it? AC animated true completion nil. Boom, like that. So it creates a new UI alert controller. But this project is designed to target iOS 7, 8, and 9. And UI alert controller was introduced only in iOS 8. This code will not run. Before, it would let you run that. You have to try and check all the code yourself in every iOS version you wanted to support. In Swift 2, it'll tell you, eh, UI alert controller is only available in iOS 8 or newer, and it'll offer to fix it for you. Now, in this case, I'll write the fix it for you so you can see exactly what it means. In this case, just double click on this first one, boom. It's now got hash available or pound available. So if pound available iOS 8, do this, and then, fall back on earlier versions. So I can put different code in there. I could say, well, okay, so here I'm on iOS 7. I'll use let AV equals uh, UI alert view. Da -da 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 -da. Stuff there. 
So hash available, pound available, will let you distinguish between code that will run on certain versions, otherwise on other versions. So here, this code only runs in iOS 8 or 9, and this runs in iOS 7. Built into the compiler, it will check every line of code for you. It is so powerful. I love this feature. Next up, this is a biggie. This is a big, big change. I'm going to write for you some Swift 1.2 code. This will go crazy in the Swift 2 compiler. Uh, so I'll say, if let file path equals nsbundle.mainbundle.path for resource, and I'll say uh, examples of type txt. So if we've managed to find this file path in our bundle, then we'll do var error equals ns error, and then let contents equals ns string contents of file file path with encoding ns utf8 encoding, and then error you do ampersand error like that. That would pull in this file name into the string like this. And then you'd say, if error is nil, then hooray, all worked, else, uh-oh, something went wrong, handle the error. That is how Swift 1.2 would approach this problem. You'd have contents of files, file path, encoding, error. In Swift 2, there are now try catch, i.e. checked exceptions. And what that means is you need to say, no more NS error here, take it out entirely, get rid of this thing too, zap all this stuff. Instead, you use a new do try catch keywords. That's why do while's changed to repeat while. This is the new meaning of do. So you say do let contents equals try that catch. Uh-oh. And what it means is if you make it to here, then hooray, it all worked. So this starts the do block. It will try this out, try in a string. If it fails to load the contents of the file, it will immediately stop running. This line will not be reached. It will jump straight to here. Uh, if it can be loaded, it will put it into here and carry on executing. And you can have as many try blocks as you want. You can have, you know, let this is, you know, contents two equals try that, contents three, try something else and so forth. So you have lots of try, 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 and then a catch block here to catch them all. Now, uh, this, of course, can be quite annoying if you know for a fact that the file is definitely there. Uh, you can override this error. So if I zap all this stuff here, go back to here, uh, it will warn me, of course, because, uh, oops, I need that uh, closing brace. It'll warn me because I'm not catching this stuff. I'll look, print contents, there you go. Get rid of that error. It'll warn me here because it, it's I've got to try and it's not being handled. If I know this thing is definitely going to work, as in it absolutely has to work, otherwise my system is going to fail. In this case, if this file is in my bundle, which it absolutely must be in order for my app to work, you can say try exclamation mark. It's not really recommended, but you can do it in cases where you're absolutely sure it's going to work. Now, this stuff applies to your own errors too. For example, I could say up here, I'll define a new error type. I'll say enum my error. And it's going to descend from Apple's own error type like that. And I'll define three errors. First up is a user error, then a network error, and then the most likely a discovery D error, because let's face it, that's awful. And then I'll get rid of all stuff here. I'll make a new function called func called do stuff. And this will pass, I'll pass into this a number, which is an integer, and it's gonna return an integer like that. And I'm going to just return number times, oops, times number like that. So it's a simple enough function. Now to make that throw an error, I just write in here throws. And that's all it takes to tell Apple's like a pilot for Swift, this will throw an error potentially. And in my case, I'm going to say actually, uh, if number equals 556, then I hate that number. It's got to die. I want to throw my error dot user error refuse to handle that number otherwise return it squared so in here i can say uh, let result equals do stuff 100 swift will warn me all being well yeah it's warning about that stuff great uh, print print uh, the result was 
result. I took warning about unused variables, bit annoying, but there you go. Uh, boom, it's now saying, it's now saying uh, this call can throw, but it's not marked with try and it's not handled. So I have to say do let result equals try do stuff and then, oops, do open uh, brace, then catch errors here, like that. That'll make the compiler errors go away or being well. Of course, I've put that up here too. Sorry, there we go. Boom, that's how it's done. So do let result equals try do stuff, then print it out, otherwise catch this. Now you can see I am throwing my error dot user error. And you can, if you choose to, catch specific errors. I can say I want to catch my error dot user error like that, and then catch my error dot network error with that. Otherwise, catch everything else, and you do need a generic catch all at this time. Otherwise, do something else. So I can spot different kinds of errors here and catch them appropriately and do the right thing. Swift also lets you attach messages and other parameters to your error types. For example, I could say, uh, case error has a message which is a string so when I throw it I can say uh, message is dope like that and then catch it here when I say catch uh, user error I can just say let error and then print out but print sorry the error was uh, error like that so you can pass messages back as well. It's quite flexible. So that's the new try, catch, uh, do, throw stuff, which is great. Next up, let's zap all this code, make it nice and clean again, otherwise I'll get myself even more confused. There we go, boom, zap all that stuff. Next up is a new keyword called guard. Now this is a bit complicated, but it does make a lot of sense. Uh, I'll put in here, uh, var username is going to be an optional string. Might be there, might not be there, who knows. And then I'll set that to be username equals some other object dot get username. So it's gonna get this username from somewhere else, which might return it, might not, who knows, we'll see. And then it's gonna pass that to a, a thing I haven't written yet called fetch cloud data for username. So let's write that. An optional username, like that and returns an optional string. Now, in the old days, you'd have said, okay, what if username's nil? Well, let's find out. If username is nil, then return nil. I got nothing in, get nothing back. Then you'd say something like, you know, let user equals username, unwrap it, and finally print fetching cloud data for user, boom. And you do some hard work there and then return secret cloud data. Very roughly, that's how you do it. Now, with Swift 2, there's a new keyword called guard, which is designed to make your intent much clearer and it actually unwraps optionals as it goes. So, what you can say is instead of this whole block here, you can say guard let user equals username, else return nil. And that does those both lines of code in one. It will unwrap username into user if it can. Otherwise, it will exit the method straight away, which is a much clearer way of making your intent uh, obvious to programmers. It's basically early returns done very nicely with optional wrapping built in. Next up uh, is a new keyword called defer. And this is why I'll try and end it. This is a complicated one, so stick with me. This is essentially more or less like try finally. Uh, except with much nicer syntax, I think. Let's zap all this code. Boom, there we go. I'm gonna write a new function here and I'll call it func write log. And this thing is gonna open a file by calling open file, a made up method I've created off the scene, so don't worry about it. Then it's gonna get in some hardware status by saying fetch hardware status. Then it's gonna make sure it's okay by saying guard that is not disaster, uh, else return, so get out if it is a disaster. Then write to that thing, the hardware status. And let's repeat this three times when I have uh, hardware, let's do software, 
software, software, software, network, 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 and finally, network. So more or less, that's our amazing log file stuff. And finally, when we've written all the amazing stuff out, we want to close the file uh, called file, like that. Now, there's a problem with this code, and what it is is quite simple. If I have uh, fetched the hardware status, and it says, okay, I will write it out. I fetch software, it's okay, I write it out. I fetch network, uh-oh, this one says disaster. It will return. Garb will make sure it does not equal this value. If it does, it will return. It will never close the file. That file will be left open, or the cache will be left unflushed, or the network will be left doing something, who knows what. What it means is, close file will never be called. Now in Swift 1.2, you had the option of taking that line out of there, and uh, you know putting it uh, in, say here, like that, all over the place, and then actually you need it here as well, sorry. So repeat yourself, which isn't great. Uh, with Swift 2, there's a much nicer way of doing it, and it is called defer. You just say, defer, top, open brace, your code, close brace. And what it means is, this whole method will run fully, and when finally it hits here, when it exits the current scope, then it will execute defer, anything here. So it will close the file after the method finishes running, or when the current scope leaves, as in the case of loops. So it's a really simple way of doing try, finally, with really nice syntax. So that is it. That's just a few of the new features inside Swift 2. There are lots more. For more information, uh, see the website, hackingwithswift.com. You can find, I think, 33 tutorials now on there, completely free, teaching you Swift, including three for iOS 9, showing things like Stack View and similar. Go and check them out. They're all completely free. And, of course, follow me on Twitter. I am at two straws. If you have questions, I'd love to hear from you. Feedback, suggestions, comments, hate mail. Okay, not hate mail. Everything else, please follow me there. I'd love to hear from you.